Good morning students. So in this session, uh, session number 19, we will be discussing about your secondary batteries. So as I have already told you in your previous session, secondary batteries are the rechargeable batteries. That is the chemical reaction happening inside the batteries are reversible. That is once the chemical reaction happen, they produce some chemical energy. Uh, the chemical energy is converted into electrical energy. Once the battery is dead, by passing electric current back into it, you can convert, you can reverse the reaction, cap, chemical reappen, reaction happening. As a result, you can again have the electricity produced by the cell. So, such type of batteries are called as your secondary batteries. Today, we will be discussing about one, one such type of secondary battery that is your lead storage batteries. As I have told you in your previous session, the lead storage batteries are used in your automobiles. So the automobile batteries, the large one batteries, those we see in your uh, uh, cars and small batteries which we see in your uh, scooter, bikes, etc. All these are your lead storage batteries. They are simply called as sulfuric acid batteries also. So the electrolyte here it is sulfuric acid as a result it is also called as sulfuric acid batteries also. So if you look into the pictorial representation of the cell, the cell looks like this. So here I have taken three cells. So each one cell has an anode and a cathode. Such three types of cells I have taken. The EMF of one cell is 2 volt. EMF of one cell is 2 volt. As a result here there are three cells. Three cells. One, two and three cells. So the total EMF of this cell can be taken as 2 into 3, 6 volts. Usually the batteries are available in 6 volts or uh, uh, 12 volts or 24 volts battery based upon the automobile which we are using. So as a result this is a 6 volt battery, one cell as you all know the batteries are nothing but these are the uh, uh, setup where you uh, join the n number of cells in series as I have already told you n number of cells in series. So here I have taken 3 cells which is connected in series to give me a, a lead storage battery of total EMF of 6 volt, one cell is equal to 2 volt, 2 volt per cell. Uh, the cathode and anode, as usual it has a cathode and anode. The cathode plates and the anode plates are arranged in alternation. That is one cathode plate, anode plate, cathode, anode. So they are, uh, so they are set up in an alternative form. The both cathode and anode plates are made up of grid of leads. Grid means this mesh like. I think you can see the mesh like things are called as grids. So both are made up of grids of lead that is the grids are made up of lead. Into the grid the mesh type thing the based on what you are filling it is uh, classified into cathode and anode. First taking your cathode, cathode these are your lead grids that is grids are made up of lead inside which you are going to fill if you observe this is your cathode the blue ones are your cathode these are the lead grids grids made up of lead mesh made up of lead filled with lead oxide filled with lead oxide so cathode is your lead grids filled with lead oxide anode anode are your pink things pink grids so again it is made up of lead itself grids is made up of lead itself but inside the grids that is inside the mesh type of thing you are filling spongy lead you are filling spongy lead here it is lead oxide here it is spongy lead what do you mean by spongy lead it's very simple it's a lightweight lead which looks like a sponge so that is filled inside this anode so cathode is lead filled with lead grids filled with lead oxide inside you have filled with your lead oxide lead grids that is your anode is lead grids filled with spongy lead these alternating setup of your cathode and anode grids plates of lead is dipped into 38 to 40 percent of sulfuric acid 38 to 40 percent of sulfuric acid solution so this is the cell setup now going into the reaction what happens the reaction at the reaction at anode at anode anode is nothing but your lead grids with spongy lead 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 undergoes oxidation as you all know anode is oxidation that is half cell is oxidation so you can observe here lead has undergone oxidation removal of electrons so the leads present inside the spongy lead presented inside the anode they liberate electrons that is they undergo reduction so, sorry oxidation and cathode what is cathode cathode is the lead grids filled with lead oxide so the lead oxide undergoes reduction undergoes reduction you can observe lead oxide undergoes reduction it accepts the electron as a result at cathode reduction occurs so if you look into the overall reaction overall reaction of these two anode and cathode lead lead oxide 
undergoes oxidox reaction that is lead undergoing oxidation lead oxide undergoing reduction to give you the products two products one is lead sulfate the other one is water the lead sulfate and the water so this is your overall reaction so in lead storage batteries anodic reaction cathodic reaction as well as overall reaction is very very important if they ask you for one mark write the anode cathode reactions or your overall reaction of lead sulfuric acid battery it is very important now the thing is the lead storage battery is ready the anode undergoes oxidation cathode undergoes reduction they produce some chemical energy it is converted into electrical energy once the reaction is complete that is all your lead and lead oxide is completely converted into lead sulfate and water that is the reaction is complete what you have filled with these grids lead and lead oxide completely they have been reacted to give you the lead sulfate which deposits over your electrodes and it is also producing your water this water that has produced dilutes your sulfuric acid it dilutes your sulfuric acid while lead sulfate gets deposited over your electrodes now if you pass a dc current if you pass a dc current dc current through the battery through the battery remember once all your lead lead oxide is converted into lead sulfate and water the battery is dead that is there is no more chemical reaction to happen hence there is no chemical energy to produced to convert into electrical energy now the battery is dead now what you have to do you have to recharge this battery you can recharge your battery what you should do you should connect it to a dc current what is dc current it's your direct current you are connecting this battery dead battery into your dc current so what happens the above reaction the above reaction that is the above reaction gets reversed reversed as i have already told you such batteries the chemical reaction can be reversed by uh by connecting it to an electrical supply so if you connect this battery which is completely dead by producing lead sulfate and water if you connect it to a dc current this reaction that is lead sulfate and water reacts to give you back this re reactants so the reaction gets reversed now all the reactions have been obtained again now the battery is recharged completely again if you go on utilizing again the forward reaction happens and it produces some electrical energy so this is how you recharge your lead sulfate battery that is lead storage battery by connecting to a dc current reaction backwards that is the backward reaction favors again the re uh, reactants comes into existence again it is reused to get your electrical energy so this is how you reuse your battery secondary batteries lead storage battery by passing your electric current so this is what products reactants to products electrical energy is produced electrical energy if you pass products are converted into reactants again the battery is ready to get your electrical energy so this is how you reuse your secondary batteries so the next battery is nickel cadmium battery it is also a secondary battery uh, it is, is also rechargeable as i have told you it is used in your calculators your camera cells etc so nickel cadmium battery let us see in your nickel cadmium battery the cathode is nickel oxide nickel 4 oxide this is your ca cathode acts as cathode anode is cadmium cadmium electrolyte is koh that is aqueous potassium hydroxide the nickel oxide that is cathode and cadmium anode are dipped in your aqueous koh solution the emf of the battery is 1.4 volts that is all along its uh, lifetime it produces 1.4 volts of constant electric current so the overall reaction of the cell since the cell has a complex reaction i have taken only the overall cell reaction wherein the cadmium reacts that is the cadmium acts as your uh, anode and your nickel oxide reacts with your koh to form your nickel hydroxide nickel 3 hydroxide to give you cadmium oxide and nickel hydroxide nickel 2 hydroxide and water as the thing if you observe the cadmium has undergone oxidation plus 2 oxidation oxidation and nickel has undergone reduction reduction this is reduction so your cadmium acting as anode has undergone oxidation your nickel which is acting as your uh, 
cathode it has undergone reduction so this is the overall reaction of nickel cadmium battery which produces 1.4 volt of constant electrical energy all along its lifetime and cathode is nickel oxide nickel 4 oxide here the nickel oxidation state is plus 4 then uh, cadmium the solid cadmium that is uh, metallic cadmium axis anode and your electrolyte is KOH these two cathode and anode is dipped inside the KOH and the overall reaction goes like this the third type of batteries are your fuel cells as I have told you fuel cells are a special type of batteries wherein they utilize combustion reaction the chemical reaction itself but the type of chemical reaction is combustion reactions wherein you combust combustible gases to produce your chemical energy which is converted into electrical energy one such type of your fuel cell you are today discussing is hydrogen oxygen fuel cell the hydrogen oxygen fuel cells were used in apollo spacecrafts wherein hydrogen and oxygen are your fuels of rockets as you all know using which they were producing the uh, electrical energy for the spacecraft as well as water one of the byproduct of this is water you can observe here so one of the byproduct is of water which was used for drinking purposes so the spacecraft was uh, having uh, three uses from this fuel cell that is this is your fuel used for your rocket then uh, uh, hydrogen oxygen fuel cell setup produces electrical energy that has been used by the spacecraft again the water drinking water was produced by this itself that is your one of the byproduct of your fuel cell so that was the three usage made by your apollo spacecrafts so let us see what is this hydrogen oxygen fuel cell and uh, what are the chemical reactions and uh, uh, setup of the cell the setup of the cell is this one it has two large chambers which is separated by two carbon electrodes these are your two carbon electrodes they are porous in nature the carbon electrodes are porous i'll tell you why it is porous in nature they are the porous carbon rods these are your electrodes porous carbon rods filled with powdered platinum and palladium catalyst that is the reaction taking place inside this the combustion reaction taking place inside this is very slow in an, in order to enhance this electrodic reactions you are using this platinum and palladium as the catalyst so these are very slow reactions as a result these are used to enhance the speed that is the rate of these electrodic reactions so the two chambers big chambers have been separated by two porous carbon uh, rods filled with your platinum and palladium catalyst then the middle region that that is the separated middle region has your electrolyte the electrolyte here it is your uh, sodium hydroxide solution so the middle portion of the cell is filled with your aqueous sodium hydroxide which acts which acts as your electrolyte now the into the two chambers the first chamber that is the first chamber left side it is uh, the carbon rod which is acting as anode into that chamber you are passing hydrogen gas into the second chamber on the right hand side the electrode that is uh, the carbon rod acting as cathode connected to cathode uh, wherein oxygen gas has been passed through it so first chamber hydrogen gas gas is passed the oxygen second chamber the oxygen gas is passed the both the gases since the rods that we have taken porous carbon rods they are porous in nature the body gases will enter your aqueous NaOH solution and they will be have they will be having a redox reaction so the redox reaction is like this that is the hydrogen at anode the hydrogen gas at anode it undergoes oxidation you can observe it undergoes oxidation here it is zero here it is plus one plus one so a simple oxidation of hydrogen gas happens at anode oxidation at anode at cathode the oxygen gas is coming uh, that is it is entering your uh, aqueous NaOH solution at cathode as a result oxygen undergoes reduction that is you can observe it is reduction here reduction at cathode so hydrogen gas that is coming from the chamber and uh, that is upon the anodic side it undergoes oxidation as present in your anodic reaction the oxygen gas that is coming from the cathodic side it undergoes reduction as present in the reaction the overall reaction you can observe it is two moles of hydrogen oxygen reacting to give you the water molecule so it is nothing but a combustion reaction of hydrogen and oxygen it produces some uh, chemical energy which has been converted into electrical energy by this setup so as a result you can also see the electron flow electron flow is from anode to cathode this is a load which uh, uh, which uh, takes the load of this fuel cell so if electron is flowing from the anode to cathode it means that the conventional current is moving from cathode to anode as i have already told you one of the byproduct is your water 
So this water, water vapors will be exiting from the cell from the middle uh, compartment that is having your aqueous NaOH. So this will be having a water as one of the byproduct. It will be passing in the form of vapors. So water is produced in the form of vapors which will be going out of the cell which can be utilized for the drinking water purpose which was utilized for the drinking purpose in your Apollo spacecraft. So this is about your fuel cell wherein a hydrogen oxygen undergoes com uh, combustion reaction to produce some electrical energy.